What's happening, guys? Salam Mike, back with another rendition, another episode, another chapter of fixing everybody's form. Uh, remember, if you want to get involved, send us a video to ask m i k k e at gmail dot com. We want it landscape. That means the long ways, sideways, horizontal, as high quality as possible, front and side. 70 to 75 percent for three reps choose one lift send it over now my man looks strong looks like he's got some gains been pulling for a while but what we got to worry about is it looks like he's jerking on the bar a little bit so what you can see happen is he gets in a pretty decent position um, but then what happens is his low back tends to round so one thing i would say is try not to get your hips as low uh, flatten that back out and number two as you start to drop your hips what a lot of people do is even though your arms are long and your elbows are not bent, does not mean that you're pulling the slack out or getting tension into the bar. I'm literally using the barbell as leverage, as a counterweight for my body weight falling backwards. So that means that there's going to be real tension in my arms, not just not arm bent. You can actually see right before you pull right there, there's little elbow bend, and then you start to crank on it. Second rep's a little bit better. Uh, so two things I may suggest. Move that stance in just a hair. You can see your knees are inside of your ankles. Um, that will reduce the range of motion and also get those knees on top of your feet. So move your stance in a little bit. And what we want to do is keep those arms really long and we want to pull 10 to 15 percent on that bar so you want to get your weight falling backwards think about using the bar as a counterbalance to keep your body weight up and then you're going to pull this is the the definition of pulling the slack out pulling tension uh, tension in the arms whatever you want to call it and also getting tension in our hips so dropping your hips straight down with that knee bend is okay, and many people can pull this way, but it's not optimal in my opinion. You'll be better off to flatten that back out and start to fall backwards, getting your hips back. I guess we got a deadlift version. Here we go. We got some sumo. We got some conventional. We're jamming on all of it. My man looks like he's got a deadlifter's body. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. What I would say uh, is you want to continue to push those knees out. Uh, knees going forward, although not optimal, can work for some people in the sumo deadlift. Um, but just based on your body type, if you are a little bit more mobile in the hips, I would try to go with a wider stance, even if you need to point your toes out a little bit more. Really force those knees out. So what you're going to do is you're going to feel the ground. I like to dig my uh, pads, the balls of my feet. Yes, your feet have balls, and so do most males. Uh, and you're going to really twist outwards, and that's going to force those knees out, also activate the glutes a little bit. Uh, and getting your knees out will not only get them out of the way of the barbell, the path, uh, but it'll also allow you to use your legs a little bit better and keep tension through the whole system. You have long arms, you got a fairly short torso, so you want to take advantage of that. Um, I would either suggest going full conventional, it looks like your build um, can pull conventional pretty decent, or uh, taking advantage of your build again and going with a wider sumo. Uh, people see me pull a lot, or Ed Cohn, or whatever, and they call this hybrid sumo, or close stance sumo, or whatever you want to call it. That's just um, basically an accumulation of a couple things, our leverages, and then um, our mobility. So if you have better leverages, uh, which this gentleman does here, I would take advantage of it. And that position looks all right. Uh, you got a little upper back rounding. We don't have to get into that topic too bad, um, but it looks decent. The issue I have here is same kind of deal. You do get, end up getting a pretty flat back, but you're pushing your hips under you and you want to keep that back flat and push your hips backwards. Cueing hips to the bar can create an opposite problem for most people getting your hips close to the bar creates that posterior pelvic tilt and what that's going to do is roll those hips under you unflatten your back and not be optimal to lock out the starting position is so important not only to get speed off the ground and use your muscles properly but also to lock out all deadlifts we got some bench press this is actually looking really really good um hard to see lower body right there but from that position, your upper body is looking really solid. The one thing I'd suggest is, I know it's slow-mo, but um, work on your pause. Uh, whether you're a power lifter or not, pausing the weight will force you to not heave the weight. Shoulders are in a decent position. Um, you could probably get them a little bit tighter. You see the elbows get a little bit wonky. That's probably just because you're bouncing it or heaving it slightly. Uh, so a little bit of a pause on the chest, whether your goal is hypertrophy or strength, uh, I think can be a benefit in the long run. Being more powerful and progressing that way long term can help so some tempo bench might help uh, what happens are people tend to accelerate 
going into their chest. And the only time, in my opinion, you want to accelerate the barbell is on the concentric on the way up when you're already controlled so you want the exact same pace moving fast is fine but you want the exact same pace from the top all the way till you touch your chest even with a pause or not and then explode back up and for that gentleman right there what i suggest is a little bit of a tempo on the way down pause and then also your bar path is a little too straight so force that thing back towards the rack back over your eyes uh man talk about a deadlifter's build so actually um it's hard to say really because you look very efficient with this pull, um, but one thing you are doing is uh, same thing is you're kind of squatting the weight up instead of deadlifting the weight up. So what I'd like to see is just a hair more vertical shin position, hips a hair higher, uh, and I think you're going to have a huge deadlift on the way. This doesn't look that hard for you, and I know I suggested 70%, um, but what I worry about with this type of uh, pull that you're doing right now is under max loads your hips may shoot up anyways So let's get tension in those hamstrings by getting a more vertical shin uh, and having those hips a little bit higher Yeah, we got a big puller. He's locking out at his kneecap, which is insane um, Which is common to see sometimes with a little guy who has a little bit shorter torso, but it also looks like you're fairly tall uh, Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below my man, but what I would try to do Is actually bring your chin tuck it in eyes a bit higher Hips a bit higher, get some tension in those hamstrings just like everybody else. Um, but it's really good form, really, really good form. I think you have a, a you know well over 600 pound deadlift in you uh, with a little bit more pulling practice for sure. It looks like you're messing with 315 uh, right now. Um, but find a solid program, get those hips a bit higher, shins a bit higher. On the way down there, you actually have a little bit better form, you can see. We got a bunch of pulls going on today. All right. So we only got half the shot in here. Right there, it looks pretty dang decent. One thing I would say is um, you're jerking on the bar. You can see it right there, just like everybody else. We want to get tension in those hamstrings, ladies and gentlemen. Tension in the hamstrings. We don't want any tension in our life. We don't want tension in our marriage or our relationships. But we want tons of fucking tension in our hamstrings. So what we're going to try to do, again, is use that bar as a counter balance. That means you're going to be tipping backwards like a seesaw or a teeter-totter. Um, the reason that Jerking on the bar is bad as it's going to fool you out of position. And then also you're hinging on your lumbar. Your lumbar uh, is like your low back. And what we want to be hinging is on our glutes and our hips. So jerking on the bar is going to cause that issue of hips shooting up early, pressure in our low back, and building muscle um, in an unbalanced way, in a not optimal way, allowing us not to lift amount, the right amount of weight and use the proper muscle. So get that weight falling back. And what we want, again, is about 10% of that weight through our arms you want to have heavy hands as my alan my homie alan thrall i almost said my alan thrall like he's my lover uh my homie alan thrall says and you want tension through those arms which means you're going to have heavy hands the part of the bar uh, barbell weight is going to be in your hands another thing i suggest for 90 percent of you guys is to focus on a dead stop rep if you haven't already go back and check out my video, uh, I believe I call it deadlifting like Ed Cone or the Ed Cone deadlift. And basically it's going to be a semi-controlled eccentric deadlift. And if you're training with a good proper program, proper form, it'll teach you to lower the weights slowly enough that will put you in a proper position for the next rep. Touch and go is going to reinforce that bad habit of hinging on your lower back and also not getting tension in the bar. So same thing right there, you can see my man moving his hands while he's in the starting position. When you're in a proper starting position, you can't move your hands or you'll fall. Though There's so much tension in your arms, you have an elbow bent, is just improper. So again, squatting the weight up, no tension in the hands. That's why the hips are going to shoot up forward and all your body weight's going to end up throwing up over the barbell. And the touch and go right there, the mini bounce is just going to reinforce that bad habit. So let's go dead stop. Everyone that's listening right now, we're doing dead stop reps. You can do full reset reps, let go of the bar, take a half step back, step back up. That can really reinforce good proper form. Um, but I, what I suggest is having, oh, we got a twofer with this guy. You want to have your hips a little bit higher, tension in those hamstrings, tension in the glutes, and then real tension in the bar, through the bar into your arms. Squat actually looks uh, really, really solid. Um, not much I can say from this angle. Uh, you might be able to go with a slightly wider stance, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with what's going on right now. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind, I believe uh, R. Kelly said. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. You guys are welcome for that. Hopefully you can turn up the headphones. Um, what I would also suggest is 
perhaps just slowing down that eccentric a little bit under heavier loads same thing will happen is that uh, barbell you want to be in control of it the entire time and your hips are going to end up shooting up so what I would suggest is I think about my bottom of my feet as like some magnets and I'm going to pull myself pull myself down into the hole of the squat forcing your knees out pulling yourself down with your hamstrings um, being in control the entire time and exploding back up so again tempo squats uh, having a three second eccentric with a th three second concentric can help a lot that's it for this one guys give it a thumbs up give it a subscribe salam i'm out of here